I don't know about you, but Mark and I are finding less and less to buy for reselling. So in a hurry. Are you feeling it too? Slim pickings at the thrift stores, even the church rummage sales and the garage sales. I mean, really, when it comes to garage sales, a lot of people are resellers, meaning they first try to sell it on Facebook Marketplace. If it doesn't sell there, it might move to their garage sale. And if it doesn't sell there, it might get donated to Goodwill. Goodwill goes through it, pulls the best of anything that's donated, sells it on their own website, and then it goes out on the floor for you, for you, the person who wants it for yourself. But this is a channel of resellers, so I'm going to just say it goes out on the floor for you, the reseller. So wherever you go, it's becoming slum pickings everywhere for good items to resell. But is it possible, is it possible that you're missing things, that you're missing opportunities to find things to resell? Are you stuck in a niche and refuse to budge? You're looking for something in that one category that you like to sell in and end up passing by other things that you could make profit on. When it's all said and done, it's about finding things we can make profit on, right? After all the selling fees, it's about making a profit. I want to tell you how the title and thumbnail for this video came about. Yesterday at breakfast, Mark and I were watching TV while we eat breakfast, we always do. An ad came on for preppers, you might say, an ad for preppers who want to buy, who wants to buy into inventory of food that will last 25 years. Yes, 25 years. And I said to Mark, I said, who wants to have food sitting around for 25 years? And Mark's response was quite wise. He said, well, it depends on how hungry you are. Touche. How hungry are you? Are you hungry for inventory? Are you having trouble finding things to resell? Could it be that you're passing up things at every store you go to, at every sale you go to? Are you passing up things because you've narrowed your search? Now, I understand that finding unusual items can sit on the shelf a little longer. And many resellers nowadays are just into selling clothing. Flipping clothing fast, brand names, sell it within 30, 60, 90 days max, and move on to the next piece of clothing. Well, if you've watched our channel for any time at all, you know that our channel is not predominantly about clothing. Oh, I sell some clothing. I buy a little bit of clothing, but mostly it's hard goods and unusual things that we can make a profit on. So that means, well, it sits on the shelf just a little bit longer now. But if you adopt the prepper mentality of never running out of food, of having food for 25 years, no, no, I don't want to, no, I don't want our items to take 25 years to sell. That's just being funny about it. But if we take that approach of being prepared, having an emergency plan, well, then maybe, maybe we're willing to look outside of our typical niche or niche, however you want to say it. Yeah, maybe we'll just, you know, open up those blinders just a little more and see what's around us and pay closer attention because in this video, I'm going to show you some items that we found to resell that are quite unusual. Yes, quite unusual. Not necessarily glassware and ceramic and pottery and wood, although I might have something like that in here, but unusual things that we bought to resell that we're going to make a decent profit on. I say going to make because I'm showing you items that we recently found. Wow, that was a long intro, wasn't it? <laughs> Welcome to our reselling vlog number 32. What is a reselling vlog? Well, it's mostly about reselling and a little bit of personal mixed in. And if you're new to our channel, my husband Mark and I resell predominantly on eBay these days, a little bit on Poshmark and Macari. Well, I did relist a few items just to test it out. But if you saw my recent video, well, you know I don't have very high hopes for Macari these days. I have so much to share with you in this video, so let's get started. Our first stop to find things to resell on eBay is JJ's in Bristol, Virginia. On a couple of things here. This is a ceramic cat. This one is a chef cat. Needs a little bath, maybe. It's a vase. They're asking ten dollars. It's made by Cats by Nina. Nina Lyman. This is ten dollars as well. This one similar to this, but it was more black. It sold for seventy-five. So I think I'm gonna get these two, as long as they're in good condition. 
I found them in a booth that was basically empty. I can only imagine how many shoppers walked by that booth where you had to walk all the way back in to find that one little case with these two little cats on it. Very easy to pass by. Did I know anything about these cats before I walked into that booth to look at them? No, no, I did not. I knew nothing about them. I just saw these really big cats. Well, let me get them for you. Hope I don't drop them. I just saw these really big cats. I mean, look how big this is. Oh, it's echoing. But look how big these kitty cats are. What did I pay for it? I think I paid 10 each. And the signature for this one is right here. Cats by Nina, Nina Lyman. The next thing I found at JJ's is this. Only I found more than one. I'm debating on those. They're home co, home interiors. They're $15, I think, for the set of four. And it's supposed to be 20% off all items. First of all, in the booth, they were up really, really high. And I had to work hard to see the price. They were asking $15, but there was a sale on in the booth. Let's talk about who made these. It says it right on the back. Well, first of all, let me show them to you. Daisy. I'm going to be tested on all my flowers, so I'm just going to show them to you. And these two. And first of all, as most of you know, I used to sell home interior, home co, back in the day, like a long time ago. I was only about 20 years old when I sold it, so I recognized it right out of the gate. No matter what year these were made, I recognized it. And what I like about home interiors, home co, which of course is out of business, is on the back you will always find the number of the item always the numbers always on there so it's easy to search i did take a google lens and then i typed in some of the pertinent information and it came up right away they were asking 15 dollars for the four they're 25 percent off so how much is that that brings them down to 11.25 for all four they're selling on ebay for about 18 dollars each plus ship so to me it was a no-brainer to buy these I'm going to take a custom box well let's check the length my longest box is 16 inches. They come to 16 and a quarter. So do I have to make a custom box for these? Maybe not. If I put them on the diagonal in the box, I might be able to stack them okay. And even if I do need to make a custom box, well, I'll get it done. And I know they've been in JJ's store for a very long time. How do I know that? Well, I saw them there several months ago. I just didn't slow down enough to check them out. And anyway, they weren't on sale at that time. The other reason I know that they've been there for a long time is there was, well, a lot of dust on them. <laughs> a lot of dust. Don't you think it's time for intermission and a snack? I made some muffins in my favorite pan because who doesn't love the muffin top? Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell these banana muffins. Banana, walnut, chocolate chip, Oh my gosh, they smell absolutely delicious. And I love the square pan because, you know, you get more muffin top. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? That crunchy muffin top. I let them sit in the pan for about 25 minutes. Then I flipped them out and I always turn the bottom up for a little while so that they can dry out just a little bit because the bottom is always very moist. One of them did fall apart a little bit. Oh, too bad I had to eat some of that. And then I have this little partial loaf. It is so good, so moist. Mmm, love these. Love it. You'll find the recipe, not only the banana muffins, but also banana bread, in case you want to make it as a loaf instead of individual muffins. You'll find two videos on my channel. Yes, I have a YouTube channel called Thrifty Recipes. So if you want to try my banana bread recipe, bread or muffins, check it out. Back to reselling. We stopped at the Amvet store in Bristol. And if you're willing to look for Christmas items all year long, well, you might just find something that other shoppers and resellers missed. What does the Amvets have today for us? You never know. Busy place here. Not even a Friday, it's a Thursday. They're open on Sunday. Little part. They always have loud music in here, so it's hard for me to video. That's why sometimes I just play music. We have crafts over here, and wow, look how empty the shelves are. Oh my gosh. This is this a sign of the times? Okay, if I find something, I'll turn the camera back on, but it's a nice size store, I'll show you. It's the biggest thrift store we have. 
found a winner. It's a uh, brand new in box. Has not been taken out of the box from what I can tell. The brand is Howard Miller, which is a well-known clock company. It's Carols of Christmas too. Probably takes batteries. And it has a model number on the back. And they're selling for $50 to $60. So if your rate's about 50%, that's a woohoo. Gotta be quiet so nobody hears it. Sure, someone sold it for $19 plus ship. Someone sold it for $25 plus ship. But someone sold it for $49.99 plus ship. So where do you think we're going to price ours? I'm going to price it up and put make offer on it. And be patient because, you know, it is um, April at the time of this video. You know, we're long-term sellers. We're not in any hurry. And it doesn't take up all that much room. Also at Amvets, I found this. Well, I only have three things so far, but three valuable things. I mean, maybe $60, $50, $60, $25. Not too bad for half hour so far. There's Mark over there checking things out. Do you know what it is? I had to take a close look at it. I knew it was fabric. And do you think I found it in the craft department? Oh no, I didn't find it in the craft department. <laughs> I found it in the dishes. Someone had laid it down in the dish area because that's what people do they don't want to take things back to where they found it so what do i have here it's a quilt pattern and fabric kit typically very expensive pattern is domiciles and it makes a 40 48 by 60 quilt the store that put this together is called frond new sealed okay might have a little tear in it but it's not a ziploc bag so it's safe to assume everything is here. I have no reason to believe otherwise. I've sold craft patterns for decades, craft pattern leaflets and booklets, but I've never purchased a kit, a quilt kit, that has all the fabric in it to make the quilt. So this one is new to me. So I had to look it up. I took the price tag off of this, paid a few dollars for it. Did I find a sold comp for this same exact kit? No, no, I did not. But I bought it because I'm willing to take a chance on it because there are active listings for similar ones, well over $100. I'm willing to invest a couple of dollars to take a chance. Would you have paid any attention to this? On a personal note, do you know that I've been upcycling jewelry, predominantly vintage jewelry, vintage to modern, but upcycling jewelry nonetheless. Like this necklace that I made. I found a necklace, I took it apart, and I upcycled it into several pendants and some earrings. And if you like that kind of thing, well, guess what? <laughs> I have a channel for that too. It's called Avante Jewelry. Here's the latest video that I'm working on. I don't know if it's gonna be out at the time of this video or not, but I found a belt, a Southwestern style belt in our restore in Johnson City, and I turned it into pendants. About a month ago, I bought this belt. So here we go. I guess I might have to make two to show you side by side, but I think it looks better not being so long. So what do you think? Do we have something here with this idea? Where do I find all this time to work YouTube channels? I must not do any housework. Have you ever been to an estate sale where they say fill a basket, fill a box, and we're only going to charge you $20? Have you been to one of those type of sales? Well, we went to one a few weeks ago put on by Outlander Estates and they had to clear the house out really fast. The place was packed with people and we were far from the first ones there. Entrance. Outland liquidators. And it's busy like flies on sugar. <laughs> it's a little house so we'll see. Is it half price day? Does anybody know? It's better. <laughs> it's better than half price? They're making deals, huh? They're making deals. Get it out of here. They said fill a box, fill a bag, and they'll price it. Does anybody know if they're making really good deals when you fill a box? $20. $20? Is that what they're saying? Well, then it's easy to just fill it, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's easy just to pick stuff up. They just want it gone. Dymo tape. I'm in your way. I'll move my basket here. Means you gotta look through every nook and cranny, huh? When it's twenty dollars to fill a basket or a box. All right, I'm gonna keep looking through this desk stuff. Okay, we spent twenty dollars to our everything that you see here. I'm sure we'll get our twenty dollars back, don't you think, hon? More than likely. Yeah, more than likely. Um, we got some new things. This uh, bun decanter, originally five. We got this Canon calculator. This Aco two to three hole. I mean, there's more than fifteen dollars right there. Yep. So as we made our way through the house and we found the dining room and the desk of office supplies, we found this. And we thought, this is new in package. How is this still sitting here? Looked it up on eBay, and don't you love it when eBay says zero results for your search? That's what we got. But we finally tracked it down, and in sold comps, it went anywhere from $19.99 plus ship to $49.99 free ship. So where do you think we're going to price ours? What's well, going to be probably $49.99 plus ship but it was still there. Hundreds of people going through the house and they missed it. I will say the downfall of filling a basket or a box for $20 is you tend to put some things into it that you wouldn't buy otherwise. So we came home with a whole bunch of stuff, but we'll get our money back. Our next stop is a little thrift shop in Boone's Creek, Tennessee. And I have to say, as far as thrift stores go, it's typically pretty chunky. I mean, it's better than it was, uh, definitely better than it used to be. You just never know if you're going to find anything or not. But Mark and I are happy if we can leave with just one thing, just one thing that we can make a decent profit on. Did we find it? Thrift shop at Boone's Creek. It's been a while since we've been here. Sometimes we find things here. Not too often, but worth taking a look. Some jewelry. Some more jewelry. Some books. Some decor. Oh, wood heart's kind of neat. Mark, they got, they got rid of the clothes. No clothes here anymore. They must have moved into their other location in Johnson City. He said two dollars on this. Dollars on the grinder. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna get that as long as you think it works. Well, he was a tough one to negotiate with. He was going by weight of things to judge the price, but this is a beautiful grinder. And what we know that I don't think he picked up on, he looked at it though, Peugeot, France. We've sold these before. And I don't know, I'm thinking it might be worth 20, 25. We paid $2 for it. We learned quite some time ago that we can make some decent profit on grinders whether it's a salt grinder, pepper grinder, or combination of the two. We do research the brand name, and Peugeot, if I'm saying it right, Peugeot, is one of the brand names. So is Old Thompson. What do I have here? I hope I don't get salt and pepper all over the place. These haven't been cleaned up yet. Okay, we got Peugeot, France. This is a salt grinder, Cole and Mason. This one we paid a dollar for, and it's just um, Farberware. I think we got this with Fill the Basket for 20. And this one we paid a dollar for, and it's Old Thompson. So if you're walking past these nice grinders, see, it doesn't have to be a salt and pepper shaker, traditional. If you see grinders, pay attention, look for the brand name 
on the bottom because that's where it normally is and do your research. Typically they're a dollar or so and they can be worth 18 to 25 dollars. Other resellers are saying all the time that you have to take returns on eBay. No, no, no. That is one choice on eBay that we still get to make. Of course, if they say item not as described or item is damaged or not what they ordered, sure, you got to take back a return. But just for the reason of, I don't like it, no. If you have no returns on your listings and the buyer chooses, I don't like it, comments, I just don't like it, no, you don't have to take it back. And since we're talking about returns, a commenter on my video about Macari and all the changes they've made, they left a comment that said, they've had two returns so far on Macari since the change, and one of the buyers sent back a different item. Mm -hmm, different item. They contacted Macari, and Macari gave them credit. Did you hear what I said? They gave them credit. They didn't pay them for the item that they sold. They received credit on Macari. And what happens with credit on Macari? Well, you have to use it to purchase something else. And if you purchase something else, you have to pay a service fee up to 10%. The credit card fees are waived, but you have to pay a service fee up to 10%. So yeah, if somebody switches out something on Macari, you don't get your money. You get credit that you have to pay a fee on to use it. Huh. Didn't see that one coming, did ya? I didn't either. But there's another one. A comment in a Facebook group for Macari. Someone said that the buyer messaged them that they got the shirt that they ordered and it that it wasn't in as good a condition as they had hoped. That's what they told the seller. Well, when they chose the reason for returning to Macari, they chose arrived damaged. Arrived damaged. Well, you know what they're hoping for, right? The buyer's hoping that Macari will refund all of their money, plus their service charge, plus their credit card processing fee, because you know, the item arrived damaged. Sadly, on Macari, I think it's just the beginning. The next stop is Restore in downtown Kingsport, Tennessee. And we've been starting to go into the home improvement area. We always shop the store first. And then I've been checking the home improvement. What am I looking for? Mainly, I'm looking for things in the garden area, like planters. I didn't find a planter this time. I found something better. Yeah, I think this is better. Restore. These corbels are pretty with the birds, but I don't know how much they are. I have to go ask. So I bought the two corbels. They were $16 to the pair, 30% off, so what, $12 and some change. And I think I'm going to get quite a bit out of them. Okay, get these up here. <laughs> They're not the same as the sole comp that I just showed you, but they're cute as can be look at this little bird and oh sorry look at the little bird i think it's two-sided it is these things are really heavy the buyer wants it they'll pay for the item and they'll pay for the shipping so i was pretty excited when i found these and they're not going to be hard to ship i'll just wrap each one and put them together it won't even take a large box heavy for sure but i think i'll probably price them at oh i don't know maybe well, that one's sold for $141. Maybe I'll price them at $149.95 to start out with make offer and go from there. Would you have paid any attention to these? Check out the home improvement section in your restore. Go to the garden area and look for things like this. We rarely stop at our local Goodwill anymore, but sometimes, you know, I just have to go in and take a quick little look. And I found some bowls, a whole bunch of bowls. Find these, sixteen for four ninety nine. Someone mark that. Paid only four ninety nine for all of these. Are they all the same? Well, they kind of look the same, but they're not all marked the same on the bottom. This one says McCoy Ltd. May not be the same McCoy that we know as McCoy. And, and one of them had a Japan label on the bottom. So that kind of tells me <laughs> that they could be coming from all over the place. But why did I pick these up? What was I thinking? What were you thinking, Vicki? 
Well, I was thinking there were 16 bowls for $4.99, so that was pretty good. And I was thinking that they're vintage. And I saw them as not just a little prep bowl. I thought of them as little succulent planters, maybe little herb starter planters. I could see more uses than just a little prep bowl. So it remains to be seen how much I'll make on these. But my point here is to think outside the box. $4.99 for 16 bowls? How can I go wrong? I'll keep you posted because none of the stuff I've shown you so far is listed yet. Mark and I are gearing up for some summer adventures, but first we had to go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. Yep, the dentist. I'm glad it wasn't me this time. But while we were there, I had a cute little visitor. Looky here, I've got a friend here. I'm at the dentist's office. Mark is in the back at his appointment and I've got a little friend. What? You got a little friend here. Keeping me company. Keeping me company. You want to smile? Oh, somebody else is here. Let's see how fast you leave me. At our next stop, we were shopping for helmets for our bicycles. Mark got our bikes all cleaned up and ready to go. Still trying to find a basket for it. But one thing we found out is that our helmets from 20 years ago were shot. Yep, they were just falling apart. So we had to find new helmets. And I wasn't really prepared to be on video. We're checking out helmets at Walmart since Mark has our bicycles almost ready to go. But we need some new helmets because what we have are so old. So let's see what he looks like. Let's take a vote here. Ooh, I, I love the flap in the front. That's that's a nice little oh, sunshade. Oh, this is part of the, <laughs> I gotta, gotta leave the, uh, the, the, the display thing on. I know, that looks kind of crazy. You're cute no matter what. I bet you could try any of these on. But you say that to all the boys. <laughs> no, just you, hon, just you. Uh, I told Mark, I was thinking about this one. What do you think? Do I? Do I dare? So what do you think of this one? I think it's definitely Does you. Does that work? I don't have any makeup on today, so this is as good as it gets, which isn't very good. <laughs> All right, cut. I think this one will do. My bicycle is purple and it has a little bit of purple in here. So I'm going with this one. I'm not looking up. I know you're still filming. <laughs> I don't know about you, but we have our favorite sales that we like to go to every year. Let me back up. I have my favorite sales that I like to go to every year. <laughs> Mark, well, if I'm honest, sometimes he could take it or leave it, but he's a good sport. And once he's there, he has fun too. But this time we didn't make it to the sale on day one, no. We missed the sale, but we were having a great day. We had uh, breakfast with friends. Yes, we have friends here now. <laughs> had breakfast with friends and went to a thrift store and antique mall in Church Hill, Tennessee. I didn't discover until we got home when I looked at the newspaper that we had missed not one, but two of our favorite church rummage sales. Yeah. How did I make plans on the day of two church rummage sales that we love to go to? That I love to go to. So we walked in and basically the tables were bare, but I didn't give up. I kept looking and looking and looking. I wasn't gonna give up. So what did I find that other shoppers and resellers missed? It's pretty quiet in here. It's the second day of the sale and we missed it yesterday. And so I'll be shocked if there's anything really good left. Well, I finally found the winning item at this church rummage sale. Brand new, $49 Arctic men's, I guess, winter snow pants. That's the winner. Paid only $1 for these men's pants, Arctic's pants has the original price tag on it for $49. Remember, this is the second day of the sale. How did these get missed? Maybe because it's April when I found them and nobody was interested in looking at winter clothes. They're going to be worth still about $49 and I paid only one. Pay attention to the winter clothes, even if it's spring or summer. Thank you. There's not much left, but I refigured so. I'm gonna keep moving around. There's not much left. No surprise there. Well, I found a winner at this sale. Probably worth about $50, $60. And it's gonna cost a dollar. It's a brand new Hagerty zippered flatware storage drawer liner. It is an odd shape. It's going to be awkward to ship. I think it's longer than my longest box, but I'm going to get that. I'll figure it out. It was half price day, so instead of 
two dollars it was only one dollar what is it oh i've never seen it before <laughs> why was i looking at something i'd never seen before well first of all i couldn't find anything else so i was going around and around three or four times to see if there was something that i was missing zippered flatware storage drawer liner brand new no box but in the original bag with the original paperwork the ladies at the church sale told me that oh if you had just been here yesterday there was so much stuff on the tables we had so many people well then how did this get left behind i think number one no one at a glance no one recognized it resellers didn't want to slow down long enough to check it out because they were going after the things that they're used to going after and and if they did see it maybe they thought it was too awkward to ship is it going to be probably <laughs> but I can line it with cardboard and pad it and probably put it in a large poly mailer if nothing else, you know, have cardboard supports for it. Or maybe we'll just make a complete box for it, but I'll get it done, don't you worry. And we do pay attention to sell-through rate. This one has 21 results active, and you can't trust that number, but it says 21 active, 12 sold. That's a pretty good sell-through rate, wouldn't you say? I paid only $1 for it, and all the other resellers missed it. So tell me now, would you have paid any attention to this? I've never ever seen one before. What do we have here? A floral arrangement and a brass planter. You know how I feel about the floral arrangements. I don't know if this one will easily come out or not. It might be taped in there because it seems a little top heavy. It's too bad the planter though is so small. I like bigger ones. I do. It was $35.99. Well, I want to leave the flowers behind because I don't want to mess with them. Got it out. I should have videoed that. Oh, this is nice. Nice heavy duty. Price. Where is the price? I don't see a ticket on them. You know how I love my brass planters. Remember that. I love the brass planter. I know they're going to clean up afterwards, so those flowers will just end up in the trash. They weren't in very condition and most certainly not my style. But I got what I was after. This cute little planter still has a label on the bottom. I don't want to turn it upside down though because it still has crud in the bottom. She charged me only $1 for it and it's beautiful and it's heavy. It's not big, but it's really heavy and really pretty and I'll probably list it at $29.95 with make offer. How many of you can look past the flowers and take a really close look at the planter? Did I say that Mark's gonna join us later in the video? staying quiet while I make this video. Yeah, it's what happens when you make videos. If you're enjoying this video, we appreciate a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and comment, and all that good stuff. But don't go anywhere, because there's lots more to share with you. When I first got into selling clothing about five years ago, I really didn't know anything at all about brands and what to buy or what not to buy. And I was going to a thrift store where I could fill a bag for five bucks. So yeah, I came home with a lot of small sizes and a lot of brands that just just weren't popular on eBay. So I've been clearancing it. So I'm just gonna show you here some of our recent sales. I started at 50% off, then I went to 55, then I went to 60, I even tried 65 once. But lately 60% off is my go-to Markdown Manager discount. And I put all the clothing in a category by itself that I want to clearance. I thought if I could get just eight or nine dollars for it, well, that's a lot more than I get if I donate it if you know what I mean. And they'll turn around and sell it for $3.99. So if you can get seven or eight dollars for your clearance items versus donating it, to me, that's a good thing. Overall, the clearance is going slow, even though I put the sale on every single week. I put it on for about seven days at a time, five to seven days. Regardless, here are some of our sales on clearance clothing. This vintage woman's top brand is Miss Tina by Tina Knowles, animal print top. It's a size XXL, 2X. I've had the price at $8.95. I've had the price at $11.95. I raised the price to $19.95, had a 50% sale going on, and it sold for $9.98 plus ship. A men's t-shirt sold. It actually has class of 2000 on it. Should have sold for more, right? It's uh, vintage, but it sold on offer for $8 plus ship.
We had no plans to stop at this estate sale. We had gone to breakfast at Golden Corral for our omelet, and we saw a sign that said estate sale, and we looked at that, and then we saw another sign that said estate sale, so we went to that one, and the place was packed, I mean packed with people. Did we find anything? A few small things, and then we found these, three of them, that all the other shoppers had passed by. More importantly, what the resellers passed by. Because I saw people there checking out sold comps, but they missed these. Hi. Kitchen. Love the kitchen. They're in frames, but the frames aren't in good condition, so we're going to take them out of the frames for photographing and shipping. Have you ever seen these before? It's new to us, and I love the cats. Kuna Moa, hand-sewn reverse applique. I think they're just beautiful. Even more beautiful that they're worth anywhere from $80 to $120. And as I said, there were hundreds of people going through the house, and everyone that saw them missed the opportunity. I hope your takeaway from this video is to be willing to look outside your comfort zone, to look outside your niche, keep your eyes open, check sold comps. By doing so, you might just find a whole bunch of profitable finds to resell. That's what I hope you take away from this video. But keep watching because Mark's coming down here in just a minute to give you an update and to show you a new camera that we bought that we're going to take along with us on our bicycle and hiking adventures. We might even go outside and test it out. Do I need to raise this up for you? Unless you want to take the top of my head off. <laughs> hey, stop it. Um, would you like to give us a little update? Hi, a little update on your hand? On this hand? Yes. I tell people I'm wearing my Michael Jackson glove. It's actually a, a compression glove because I still have some swelling in the fingers and the palm and in my wrist and I still have some numbness in the tips of these fingers so oh, for those of you that are new here he had carpal tunnel surgery and trigger finger surgery all at the same time so after speaking with the doctor last week he sent me to see the hand therapist and he's the one that got this for me and they've got a, a bunch of exercises I'm supposed to do to try to get the flexibility and the feeling back and the swelling down so a little disappointing that it's taken this long but I guess it's going to take a little longer. In spite of it he has worked hard on getting our bicycles geared up for summer adventures. You don't have to sh I think they can see just step back a little bit there. He's been working hard on getting our bicycles ready to go and I mentioned to you that we have a new camera. Let me get the case. Excuse me. She said I'm working hard, but I think I'm hardly working. I will tell you, I have lost my photographer, and I have not been listing a lot on eBay as a result. I mean, I'm going to blame Where'd you. Where'd he go? What? The photographer. You, you're my photographer. Oh. See this little case here? It's got some weight to it. It has some really cool things inside, such as a new camera that we purchased. That we're Let me going help to... you later. Okay, thank you has all kinds of gadgets in here. Let me set this down though. Okay, so this is an Insta360 X3 360 degree camera. Yeah, 360. It has dome-shaped lenses on the front and the back, and there's the view screen. It's not turned on right now, so it's just reflecting. This will shoot videos or still pictures if you want in 360 degrees all the way around you all the way around and you can also switch the lenses so that you're just looking out the front lens or just looking out the back lens kind of like a regular camera does and in editing i can choose to edit it to just show the front view or the back view or the 360 view i haven't learned how to do that yet so I have some practice ahead it's of me. It's about time. I know, it's time. That's why I'm doing this and putting putting myself on notice with sharing it with you that I have to do this. So um, with it... It's called an invisible selfie stick. How long does this thing go? Don't open it in here. But how long? We'll probably poke the ceiling. It, it extends out to about nine feet. 
Who has a nine foot selfie stick, right? <laughs> we do. The, the reason it's called an invisible selfie stick, it's taking videos out this side and this side, and there's what's called the stitch line down each side where the two pictures come together. Selfie stick is right in that stitch line. You don't see it. If it's sunny out, you can see the shadow of the stick yeah. on the ground. Yeah, it, it's really cool what it can do. We fell in love with it last December and we decided it had to be a Christmas present to ourselves. So let's go upstairs, let's go outside and see if we can get some video here on the street, backyard view or something. And then I have to figure out how to edit it. <laughs> If you're going to see it in this video, well, I've figured out how to edit it. Otherwise, you'll see it another time. Let's go outside. It's a beautiful day for this. Oh, I might need my sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, because it's bright out here. Hey, okay, we're going to go out here and, whoa, it's windy of all days going to show you the extension on this pole. Let's go to the backyard. Oh, almost fell. Running around slowly. Head to the back here, hun. Come over here where it's nice and green. So beautiful out today. It's in the 70s. All right, so there's the camera. And don't go any further because it's our backyard just slopes all the way down. Turning it here and there. Oh yeah, that's cool. Should be cool when I get it edited. It's like a fishing pole. He has an app in his phone that he can connect to. Just gotta watch the tree branches. Okay, let's go around the tree, hun. Thanks for watching. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue, and Mark and I will see you soon.